A third lockdown for Melbourne. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because it looks like there is a third lockdown coming for Melbourne. There's rumours going around social media that it may be a five-day lockdown and Dictator Dan is trending on Twitter. Let's have a look at this article from news.com.au. It was just the previous article we looked at, written by Jason Murphy, looking at the, well, the predictions from the Commonwealth Bank, where if there was more lockdowns, that could have a greater impact on the economy. Well, it didn't take long for that risk to emerge, did it? Authorities are planning for a third lockdown as the Melbourne holiday in case cases grow. Authorities have held a late night crisis talks over the worsening UK mutant strain outbreak in Melbourne, planning for a possible lockdown in days. There are fears that Melbourne is on the brink of its third lockdown this morning as a cluster of cases linked to Victoria's hotel quarantine system grows to 13. It is understood that state government advisers overnight met to draw up a framework for another lockdown, which could be introduced as early as February night or possibly within days. A development which would have a disastrous impact on the Australian Open. It would have a disastrous impact on the entire economy, on the, on the entire state, on the entire country. Again, another lockdown. These are just, well, the de the, the facto norm now, isn't it? You just have to accept them. The Australian Open. Cancel Australia Day marches, but then allow Australian Open. Uh, it, it seems ludicrous, doesn't it? It just seems ludicrous. And I bet you Dan will get in with the majority next time. They'll love him there. The people love strong leadership. That's what it is. Particularly all the feminists. They love, they love the, the strong men, don't they? It's funny that. Anyway, back on topic. Today, the state's cabinet is holding an emergency meeting where it is understood a snap five-day lockdown will be on the table. The Premier and Health Minister will hold a press conference at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. At the same time, federal senators who are based in Melbourne and, and uh, who are based in Melbourne to head to Canberra now. Authorities not only concerned about the growing holiday in cluster, but they are also understood to have worried about the virus fragments detected in wastewater across Melbourne. Yeah, that's because some people getting this illness don't even know they have it. That's just what's going to happen, guys. A source close to emergency management Victoria told the Herald Sun authorities feared they had lost control of the outbreak describing scenes of pandemonium at the agency. They told the newspaper there were deep concerns at the failure of contact tracers to match information they had been given by confirmed cases and their close contacts with what the results of sewage testing was showing about the virus's spread. Officials are working with the theory that all of the cases linked to the Holiday Inn outbreak are UK strain cases, meaning it could spread a lot more quickly than the strain that took hold of Victoria last year. So what happens next? In response to the growing cases, it's understood Victorian health authorities are wrapping or weighing up a snap five-day lockdown, much like the shutdown in Perth at the beginning of the month. Early reports from the cabinet meeting in Victoria today indicated authorities may shut schools and retail with some exceptions. In Perth's lockdown, residents were only allowed to leave home for an hour to exercise with a mask within five kilometers, or if they were an essential worker, needed groceries or medical supplies, were receiving health care, or were supporting someone with needs. Schools, gyms, and cinemas were also shut, while restaurants and cafes could only serve takeaway. What about the tennis? What about the tennis? I mean... Under those rules, crowds will be banned from the Australian Open. It's an ominous, ominous sign. The AFL women's competition has put ticket sales on hold for its matches this weekend. I thought they gave away tickets. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Anyway, Prime Minister's appeal for calm. The Prime Minister is in Melbourne today, touring the CSL manufacturing plant, where local doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine for COVID-19 will be produced. He said that the traumatizing impact of the lockdown on Victorians was very real, and he under understood why it was upsetting news that the option was on the table. He said a third shutdown of, of, the Mel of Melbourne is the last thing anyone wants to see. 
I know you don't want to see Victoria go back into what you've endured last year, Mr. Morrison said, speaking directly to Melburnians and referencing the two longer periods of lockdown. I can assure you that everyone is doing everything to ensure that's not replicated again on this occasion. There's no reason it should, as other states have demonstrated. You can get on top of this pretty quickly. I have reason for confidence that they can do the same thing by following that same process. But asked if he'd been briefed that a third lockdown was imminent, Mr. Morrison said no, adding that Health Minister Greg Hunt was being briefed by his Victorian counterpart. So expert, expert backs the lockdown. Clinical epidemiologist Professor Nancy Baxter appeared to back the idea of another lockdown in the city after two more people were linked to the Holiday Inn coronavirus outbreak in Melbourne, tested positive for coronavirus overnight, and more exposure sites were listed. Well, see, other epidemiologists... See, back in the day, remember when it was the bird flu and all these other things, there were calls for lockdowns. And experts, well-known, revered experts, people who won, like, the President's Medal and, and defeated polio, called wrote papers, and I've gone through them on this channel, critical of lockdowns, of the effectiveness of it, because of the other consequences there. Surely there could be a happy medium, guys, because this they got, if they keep rolling this out again and again, this is just getting crazy. So, what I'm concerned about is as, this, is as the site of that at-risk sites grow and grow, there is the potential that there's been some kind of spread outside of that group of close contacts that is already in quarantine, she told today this morning. So they think it's already gotten out. It could be a week or more before we know it. And so then there is that opportunity for spread throughout the community under our very noses. I think if there is a time to really get this under control, the time probably is now. So it is a very tough decision. And you know, it is there is not any further community spread. It always looks like this was out of proportion. But I must say you can't prove prevention. One thing everyone needs to... Let's look this up. John's Hopkins map. We'll, we'll go to this map right now. Because there are going to be a lot of people that are scared. There are a lot of people that are scared of this, which is understandable with the media, with the fear, with the hype. Okay, there are going to be people that are afraid. Now, we need to look at, once this loads up, Australia here, guys. And we can have a look, even in Mel Melbourne. Let's click on Melbourne. Once it loads up, come on. You can get there all the internet. Come on, MBN. Come on. There we go. So we've had 20,465 cases in Victoria, 820 deaths. If we click on active cases, we can see there's 19 active cases. There's over 19,620 people recovered. Look at that recovery rate. Okay, bear that in mind if you're afraid of this. You need to look at it in perspective. There's certain things you can do, you can do to mitigate your risk of succumbing to this illness. And, I mean, one of them, frankly, is looking at obesity. That's one there. That's one we can all look at right there. You know, so keep that in mind if you're scared, everyone. If you know people that are scared, just tell them the reality of the situation. Because so I think this is something that the Victorian government needs to be thinking about very hard today in terms of whether the best thing for us is to go into lockdown or so we can have a third wave in Victoria. I still think we need to concentrate on the most vulnerable and maybe lock down aged care homes or restrict access or have higher levels of, of screening for those facilities rather than shut everything down. But, you know, what do I know? I only look at numbers and, and read uh, papers from epidemiologists. I mean, you know, and look at I, I, I depend on the advice of experts. But the problem is the counter arguments aren't getting any exposure now because it's, it's this is the accepted narrative now. Just lockdown. So you're going to see it. I'll be shocked if we don't get a lockdown in Victoria. Why authorities concerned? Authorities in Victoria announced five new local cases this morning, although all five were reported yesterday. So the figures were expected. Both of the last COVID-19 cases linked to the Holiday Inn cluster are household primary contacts close, uh, contacts of previously announced infections. It brings the total outbreaks to 13, with six of the cases already confirmed by genomic sequencing to, as having the UK highly contagious B117 strain. Victorian Health also added um, 
Bernetti at Melbourne's airport terminal 4 to the list of Tier 1 exposure sites overnight. Anyone who visited the cafe between 4.45am and 1.15pm on Tuesday the 9th of February must get tested and remain isolated for 14 days. Earlier, a staff member at the Holiday Inn in Tullamarine became the latest infection linked to the cluster. Victoria's Deputy Secretary of Community Engagement and Testing Commander Jerome Wimmer said at the point that it was a working assumption that all cases associated with the hotel cluster were of the UK variant. Clearly, it is, ve- it is a very live outbreak. We are at this stage reassured by the fact that all of these positive positives emerge from a primary contact field that is important to us. And although we are now seeing two cases of household transmission, again, it's in the household. That gives us some confidence, but this is early days. It comes as Australian Chief Medical Officer said he will investigate claims that a man breached hotel quarantine requirements in the state and slipped through hotel staff to deliver a PlayStation 4 to a friend in quarantine. (laughs) That's a mate. That's a mate. Getting you a PlayStation 4 when you're in quarantine. I I need to do a cheers to that. The potential breach at the Park Royal Hotel is the latest blow for Victoria as it grapples with its growing cluster near Melbourne Airport. I mean, surely the staff could get a PlayStation 4 up to you. You know, your friend doesn't have to do the do the mission. At a press conference on Thursday, Professor Paul Kelly said he would follow it up and that the situation was not ideal. What you describe is not ideal, of course. We want quarantine to be exactly that, to separate people from the wider community, to minimize the chances of the virus spreading. So that's not an ideal situation, and I'm sure the Victorian authorities are looking into it. But I'll follow it up. So there we have it, everyone. Potential for a five-day lockdown in Victoria. What do you reckon? Do you think it'll happen? It's just going to... It seems like it's the de facto response to everything now. It's just, you know, accepted. Not There's not even a counter-argument to the implications of it. Where's the cost-benefit analysis? I don't think they've ever been done. And... People will just start demanding it. That's what scares me more. After all of this, COVID's gone in five years' time is when they start demanding these lockdowns for, for things that wouldn't have even worried people in the past. That's what I'm really scared about. Anyway, guys, if you have friends in Victoria, reach out to them. Take care. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I cobble together here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. You can also use the referral links from MeetRx or from Self Wealth if you want to get some uh, carnival coaching or share trading. That'll help us out too. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.